I just moved into a New York City apartment and I was eager to make it feel like home, like mine. After lots of scouring through thrift stores, runs to Blick, and some haircuts and hair colors later, I finally did. In the past, whenever I've watched those Architectural Digest videos and people have like a great history behind their furniture. This was made out of the wood from Winston Churchill's yacht. Nobody can really sit in this table because the chairs wobble, people fall out of them. I'm like, what? What? How can you have this level of attachment to objects that have histories with no relation to you and can't even be used properly? But now, that's me. I'm the type of person that likes to be surrounded by reminders of good memories and inspiration that make me want to go do something, paint something, go to the park, or just read a book even, because sometimes I don't make time for those kind of things that make me happy. But this is New York, and I also have to make the most of my space, so I made it a combination of decoratively inspiring, but utilitarian. I could call the bed frame I picked a minimalist one, but I think apartment oriented is a more accurate descriptor since it wasn't made of wood or anything and it was just metal. I thought I would have to build it, you know, put in some screws, be miserable from putting it together backwards like I had with other pieces of furniture. So I mentally prepared, but it was just a folding bed frame, so that was a blessing. Now that my mattress was above the ground, I could put all my sewing and gentle crafting crap under the bed and no one would see it. My bed had a great white wall of space and possibilities next to it, and this was my first priority. Not just to decorate, but literally in my entire list of things to do for my apartment. No, I don't need to do my first load of laundry. No, I don't need to figure out how my Instant Pot works. I need to put up this set of pictures above my bed. People would come over a week after I moved in and question why decorating was my priority. And I have to tell you, I have just always been this way. The first day I had my own bedroom when I was a kid, I started decorating it right away. Putting up the iconic balloon strings on ceiling I had there for years to come. I am still very attached to items that hang from ceilings, but this is a rental and alas, I'm still trying to figure out how to do that here. The first iteration of the gallery wall was way too boring, way too much white space, and I like chaotic, vibrant colors, so I had to switch it up. What I have going on right now is not bad. I just want more color. I think there's too much background of white, so I could cut out some of these images and remove the text. And now that I have this entire whole display of extra watercolor magazine cutouts I have, I'm gonna fill up this color, replace a few things, change them out, and then hopefully I'll have something better. Well, I know I'll have something better. It's a couple days later and I still have this wall up. I've made a lot of adjustments. Um, the problem I'm having is that I'm not in love with the centerpiece. The piece in the middle should be the best picture or one of the best pictures, but I'm not in love with it. But I think overall these images are really cool and what excites me about this is that they're all from a watercolor magazine and I've been learning gouache, which is somewhat, which can be somewhat similar to watercolor. So it's like cool to see the watercolor on the wall and be like, oh, I can use this as, inspir as inspiration for my work. And some of these actually are gouache. I don't want to like overcrowd my room, but that is also a part of my signature look. I like to do that overcrowding. I like, I'm honestly a little bit afraid of space. I like covering up almost everything I possibly can. And I just have to figure out where everything's going to go. So after putting up everything with washi tape to plan it out and figure out where it would go, I then used thumbtack to put it in place while my camera was shooting in intervals out of focus. Good job. This gallery corner came together very organically, which is evident by the lack of intentional randomness I'd usually use for something like this, but nevertheless, my wall persisted. 
I got the Velcro command strips and I have to say I'm very impressed, except I had this larger frame on my wall with these two Velcro strips that was doing perfectly fine until one day when it was scorching hot and I was in a Zoom meeting when I heard the command strips start to give way and had to awkwardly excuse myself during the meeting, which I hate doing, to gracefully remove my frame from the wall before it crashed on the floor by itself and possibly cracked. To paraphrase the great Evan Hansen's words, aka Pasek and Paul's words, And suddenly my frame felt the command strips give way. It was on the ground. So anyway, the command strips did not give way on my gallery corner, so that was good. I also have two photo frames of pressed flowers that I'm not sure where exactly they should go. This one has a little teensy bit of purple and so does the other one. Um, I made both of these and then this one. This one is the one with pressed flowers from my trip to California. These are mostly from Los Angeles. And then this one is uh, they're just random flowers. So a bunch of these are from a bunch of different places actually. And I like being reminded of the time I was buying it when I'm looking at these. So this is from a thrift store in LA. These are from watercolor magazines and all thrift stores. This is from thrift store here. This record back here is also from LA. And all these frames are thrifted, some also from LA and SF. Yes, I brought these frames across the country with me. I even caved and fell into full hipster mode and bought some records while I was in LA and SF to put on my wall despite not owning a record player and not intending to buy one right now either. I like the way this came out though. And going forward, I want to incorporate more decor with words in it because I love the graphic design aspect of it. And like, for example, if I'm having some sort of, not necessarily writer's block or like artist block, but something like that, then I can look around and be like, oh, okay, like they put this word in this way and maybe I could somehow translate that to what I'm doing. I know that sounds vague, but I swear that is how my brain works. And by the way, everything on my wall is either thrifted or made by me. I'm not trying to flex, I'm just stating a fact. I just thought this painting was very cool and I like how the text shows through and the painting on the top. So you can see that there's more to this page than just this image. I think thrifting magazines is a good idea or way to just find big posters or images you can make into a gallery wall because honestly posters are expensive and while I think it's good to invest in some and support the artists that you love if you don't want to spend that much money on it or especially if you're living in a place for a, if you're living in a rental and you're not going to live there that long just there's something cheap and you can honestly throw so much decor. As I've progressed, I have become more and more like those architectural digest celebrities who place importance on literally every single item they own and source it from the randomest places. This table actually, we designed it and had it made and these chairs look like little humans. They're so gorgeous. And maybe when I have a new place, I will have fully gone into that hipster celebrity nostalgic mode. It's definitely one of those things that I'll understand more when I'm there, when I experience it myself, but can't be explained as much to me at least when I'm outside that bubble. I had to test out a few different spots for my desk before settling on the one that felt right. When I put a computer screen against the window, it really bothers me how the light like doesn't allow you to see the computer screen fully. So I made a plan to sew a mini curtain and even put it up <laughs> to block out some of the window light, but I realized it wasn't working. It wasn't me, it was you, you darn window with just barely enough space to not fit my computer in the middle of my desk. So thank you for being very slightly inconvenient. I bought a curtain that claimed to be blackout, but it clearly wasn't, and I could definitely tell at night. So I decided to reach under my bed and pull out my sewing machine. I used a thick thrifted tablecloth as a second layer on my existing curtain and made it an actually blackout double layered curtain. 
and opening these curtains in the morning is one of my favorite things to do, especially because I get to climb on this windowsill and almost fall down every single time. This is my room in its current state. I wouldn't call it the final version because it's always going to be a work in progress because I'm moving stuff around or switching out pieces of wall art or just having a new pile of laundry covering my entire bed. As soon as you enter, the left has my desk followed by the gallery corner and then the cart. It probably would have been better to get a shelf, but I already had this, so this is what I'm using for now. I store all my painting supplies on it and other art supplies I need frequently. Ideally, I'd have a small pegboard above it, but right now I just have some command hooks with these bulldog clips holding up a pattern of something I need to sew, fabric I need to sew, and an acrylic ruler. Just random stuff that can be hung up. Then I have my window with my windowsill that I climb on and almost fall off of every day to open my DIY blackout curtain, followed by my closet. It's not wide, but it is quite tall, so I'm making the most of it. To the right is my bed, gallery wall, and yoga mat that I like to stretch on and just honestly sit on, contemplate life on. I decided to go with a thick yoga mat instead of a carpet so it'd be easier to clean and more cushiony. This was a good decision and I'm happy for it. Just classic more ways to store stuff here. Utilitarian, I told you. I hope that gives you a good idea of my process and how the place turned out. Almost everything is secondhand or stuff I already had, except for my bed frame. Oh, and my lamps are brand new. Oh, and my chair is new, what am I saying? My chair is brand new as well. Okay, cool. Now that you know everything, thank you and bye. Oh my god, I'm finally, I'm finally going to do this. Except my fridge is so low that I'm like, hmm. I literally have to be like, oh yeah, I'll do it like that.